Is it possible to stop multiple sclerosis disease modifying therapy and modify the condition by diet alone? I'm going to share a case series of two individuals who stopped their medication and maintained a whole foods plant-based diet and were relatively stable, showing that it's at least possible to do well with MS without medication. Now I should give the caveat that you shouldn't rely too much on any one person's experience because one, there's a lot of variation in the prognosis of multiple sclerosis. I have some patients who are much older than these individuals who have been stable for much longer eating a standard American diet. And hey, there could be some individuals on a whole foods plant-based diet who stop medications who didn't do well and they didn't publish journal articles about it or make YouTube videos about it. So you're not exactly seeing the total picture here, but it's definitely interesting to take a look at. And I'd be interested to know your own experiences, particularly if you keep a whole foods plant-based diet or something similar in the comments below. And of course, I'll leave the reference along with other links. Now, one thing I should mention is one of the authors of this article is Connor Devine. It actually got cut off here. And Connor Devine is a well-known MS content creator. In fact, I previously reviewed his book, Attitude is Everything, and you can see that video in the link below. And he is known to be very critical of multiple sclerosis medications and advocates a lifestyle approach. And he's an athlete and triathlete. And also, he's one of the patients in this case series. He's patient A. It doesn't actually say that in this article, but I recognized his story immediately. And I'm not revealing any information that's not known to the general public. This is information from his book, and he rec recapitulates it here. And it's actually quite common for people to participate in their own case reports, especially physicians, and to get their name on the authorship. Now, I'm going to skip the abstract and the introduction. Essentially, it mentions that over age 50, 45, the risk of MS relapses goes down, and there's some evidence that disease-modifying therapies may be less beneficial. And there's some debate in the multiple sclerosis community, particularly among older individuals, usually much older than age 45, that they could consider stopping disease-modifying therapy, particularly if they're stable for a prolonged period. It talks about some prior researchers interested in multiple sclerosis diets, such as Dr. Roy Swank, who advocated for a low-saturated fat diet, and Dr. Terry Walls, who advocates for a modified paleo diet. And this article, of course, favors a plant-based approach, citing that it has benefits for cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. So let's first take a look at the dietary changes, and we'll start with patient A, who is in fact, I believe, Connor Devine. So this is diet before the whole foods plant-based diet, and then diet after the whole foods plant-based diet on the right side. And you can see in terms of grains, it was the same, rice, brown rice, and oats. In terms of pulses, there was a massive increase in the type and variety of beans. So prior, it was just baked beans. Afterwards, baked beans, lentils, of various types, chickpeas, peas, black-eyed peas, kidney beans. In terms of vegetables, there were large portions of vegetables every meal with a greater variety of vegetables and including kale and other vegetables he didn't eat before. It seems like he ate more fruit afterwards, mainly just eating apples and bananas beforehand and afterwards eating bananas, oranges, apple, pears, melons, and blueberries. And he didn't really eat nuts and seeds, but apparently added almond nuts and cashew nuts and he was eating much more in the way of processed food, bread, sausage, chocolate cakes, biscuits, maybe now just having occasional sweets, and he eliminated animal products previously just consuming some chicken, beef, and fish. Moving on to patient B. And this person was actually vegan prior to getting multiple sclerosis. They were long-term vegan. And actually, when I look at their diet, they ate a fairly healthy diet overall, but they moved to more of a whole foods diet and kept their veganism. And so you can see there's a slight change in the type of grains. They added different types of whole grains, such as buckwheat and quinoa. In terms of pulses, they were already eating a lot of different types of beans, but they added more things such such as fava beans and a slightly greater diversity of pulses. In terms of vegetables, previously they were eating three to four portions a day, and they increased it to eight to ten portions a day, and they mentioned that it was 
ideally organic vegetables and a much greater variety of vegetables, although they had pretty good vegetable consumption beforehand. In terms of fruit, one to two portions a day increased to two to three portions a day and greater variety of fruits. In terms of nuts and seeds, it seems like they ate a lot of it before and afterwards, but there's slight differences here. In terms of processed food, interestingly, this vegan did eat a reasonable amount of processed food both before and after. So maybe not extremely, extremely strict about it. You can see beforehand vegan spreads, vegan sausages and burgers, and here even afterwards some vegan ice cream, which I would imagine George Jelinek would not be a fan of, who is the inspiration of Patient B. So let's take a look at their story. So Patient A, again this is Connor Devine, he is a 44-year-old male living in the United Kingdom who was diagnosed with MS in 2007 at age 29. His first flare-up occurred while on holiday abroad. He experienced left-sided limb weakness in August 2006. Upon returning from vacation, a brain and spine MRI showed lesions in the upper cervical cord and lower brainstem consistent with inflammatory demyelination. So maybe at this time, he did not have a formal diagnosis of MS because he just had that one lesion. I'm sort of left to speculate. And so there was no medication commenced at this time. Six months later, he reported persistent electrical buzzing of the left side of his chest and Lamotrigine tablets were introduced. Lamotrigine or Lamictal is a medication often used to treat bipolar disorder or seizures, but it's sometimes used to treat paroxysmal symptoms in multiple sclerosis. I personally wouldn't use it a lot for this particular reason, but I suppose it's an option. And he was complaining about ongoing globus pharyngeus, a difficulty swallowing and a feeling of a lump in your throat. In August 2007, patients a reported lightheadedness, nausea, right upper limb weakness, and tingling in the fingers. An MRI showed supratentorial demyelination, so the tentorium cerebella is above the cerebellum. Anything above that is in the cerebrum, and so he developed brain lesions, apparently consistent with MS, and he was diagnosed with relapsing remitting MS. And he was started on oral dexamethasone, which is a steroid used to treat acute flares in some cases. As symptoms of malaise persisted, he was started on interferon beta 1A, which was started in October 2007. And so this is a disease modifying therapy. They don't say specifically whether this was Avonex, once weekly intramuscular formulation, or Rebif, three times a week subcutaneous formulation. It says in the book, but I don't remember exactly. Anyway, it caused constant flu like symptoms, which is a known side effect of this medication, particularly in the morning. In February 2008, the treatment was changed to glutathione acetate, and this is a drug, Glotopa or Copaxone, which does not typically cause flu-like symptoms, but it can cause local reactions. So probably he changed due to side effects. He adhered to the medication well and reported good disease control. He continued regular gym workouts, including strength and aerobic training. Now, I read his book, and in the book, he attributes his success both to the medication and to his lifestyle and sort of seems to advocate for both, but obviously later on he had a change of heart. So he remained on treatment with glutarium or acetate until March 2016 with one major relapse in 2010. So he was stable for six years after that relapse. He ran a few half marathons and a full marathon. However, he noticed waning effects of the medication in 2015 while he was experiencing flu-like symptoms for seven weeks, along with paresthesia and neuralgia, so numbness and nerve pain. In April 2016, patient A, in other words, Connor Devine, decided to stop glutarium acetate completely and commence a whole foods plant-based diet, and we looked at the changes that he made. This was based on his own research and not discussed with his clinical practitioner. At the time, his score, and they refer to this score VIAASDC, and there's a separate article, link in the description below, which kind of predicts the risk of having a relapse if you stop medication. It turns out the younger you are, the greater the risk. The more recent flares, the more new MRI lesions you've had, the greater the risk of having disease reactivation. And according to this article, there was a 90% risk of reactivation, meaning new MRI lesions or relapses over a five-year period because he's fairly young and I guess has had some recent relapses. 
Since starting the whole foods plant-based diet, he has experienced only one flare. It presented in April 2017 as right-sided limb paresthesia or numbness and monoparesis, weakness of one limb. A repeated MRI in September 2018 showed no lesions specific to inflammatory demyelination and a few lesions in the peritrigonal region, which could represent previous areas of inflammatory demyelination. So he has brain lesions, but I guess that wasn't a major change on that MRI. Patient A does not have any regular follow-up appointments relating to MS. So he kind of left the medical system, doesn't trust us anymore, I suppose. And by the way, it doesn't mention in this, he's apparently very active and has completed several, not just triathlons, as stated in this article, but actual Ironman full triathlon races, which can be like a 15, 20 hour race for an amateur. And he runs his own business and is very active. And he posts a lot on social media. Now we move to patient B. Patient B is a 53-year-old female who was diagnosed with MS at the age of 47 in 2016. Her first symptoms occurred in May 2015, that of right-sided optic neuritis, a common first symptom of MS. She experienced another episode of optic neuritis in the left eye in October 2015, followed by left arm neuralgia and weakness. MRI brain in December 2015 showed at least two non-enhancing subcortical lesions, Finally, a lumbar puncture in March 2016 showed evidence of oligoclonal bands in the cerebrospinal fluid, and patient B was officially diagnosed with relapsing remitting MS. So one thing I note is that saying she had at least two non-enhancing subcortical lesions is a relatively small number of lesions. You know, many people with MS have 100 lesions and could still be doing fairly well. So I'd say both of these individuals, the baseline MRI brain seemed to show a low number of lesions. Of course, I'm just speculating because I can't see the pictures, but that's sort of implied from the text. Soon after the MS diagnosis, patient B read a book called Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis, the evidence-based seven-step recovery program by Dr. George Jelinek. Now, a lot of people know that I like Professor Jelinek and I advocate for very similar recommendations to what he makes in the book. And I'm actually working on a research project with Professor Jelinek where we're trying to look at people with MS over age 55 to see if there's a correlation between diet and prognosis in MS. To see do people with lower disability who've had the disease for many years who are older seem to have a different lifestyle. And we're looking at diet, smoking, sunlight exposure, vitamin vitamin D levels and see if there are any correlations. There are a lot of cross-sectional studies in younger individuals, but older people are much more likely to have more disability. So she was already following a vegan lifestyle. However, after reading the book, she decided to commence a whole foods plant-based diet and supplement with further vitamin D and cold-pressed flaxseed oil. These are the vitamin supplements recommended by Professor Jelinek. Now, I should say that Professor Jelinek doesn't actually recommend a strict vegan diet. He recommends a whole foods plant-based diet plus seafood, so she didn't exactly follow his recommendations, though in the book he doesn't seem to believe that seafood is critical, so I don't think he would be opposed to what she is doing. But anyway, patient B commenced treatment with disease-modifying therapy in September 2016, starting with dimethylfumarate. This caused a number of side effects, including flu-like symptoms, dysgeusia, or abnormal taste, phantosmia, or abnormal spells, and deranged liver function tests. Uh, so for those who don't know, Tecfidera or dimethylfumarate is a twice daily pill for MS. The more common side effects are flushing of the skin and gastrointestinal changes. These side effects wouldn't be all that common, but they could occur. On discussion with the MS specialist nurse, a joint decision was made to stop taking the medication in December 2016. So this individual didn't go it alone. Maybe the nurse thought she didn't have a lot of lesions, she was doing well, she had terrible side effects, it was reasonable to stop medication. Patient B continued experienced left arm neuralgia and right leg paresthesia. Therefore, she agreed to commence glutiramer acetate treatment in September 2017. 
After six weeks of treatment, wheels started appearing at injection sites, and therefore the medication was stopped in November 2017. So site reactions are common with this medication. And believe it or not, I have actually personally taken this medication. I don't have MS. I'm just someone who likes to experiment. And I'll include a video where I describe the similar side effect, the terrible side effect I had from Copaxone or Glutyramor acetate. It's hard for me to believe that people could take this medication every Every day or even three days a week in modern times. Furthermore, a stage one melanoma was resected in December 2007. So she had skin cancer, but stage one means it's localized and surgically curable. Since then, no further MSDMTs have been commenced as per the patient's preference and an agreement with the clinical practitioner. At the time, her VIAASDC score was 3, giving her a 40% chance of disease recurrence in 5 years. So what the article is saying is because she's older and maybe had not had flares recently, it's not as impressive that she would be stable. As people get older, there's a tendency to have less flares, less clinical attacks, distinct periods of worsening, and less new lesions on the MRI, but there may be a greater chance of progression, a slow worsening over time. She has only had one flare of MS since stopping medications in November 2019, right optic neuritis. She remains under the care of consultant neurologists and has annual follow-up appointments. So she is different perhaps than Connor Devine in that she is not as disenfranchised from the medical system. She sort of still believes in doctors and is still following up with them. She has remained physically active with regular yoga sessions and half marathon running. So both of these people are not just medication free, not just low in disability, but they're doing extremely well, able to perform as athletes. And, you know, for a 53-year-old to run a half marathon is very impressive. And so in the rest of the article, they kind of describe some of the other research. This is a brief summary of their disease course and everything that I essentially just read to you. And they have a discussion talking about some of the other evidence, some of the basic science evidence for a whole foods plant-based diet, how perhaps the diet could affect the inflammatory markers and could affect the gut microbiome, which could change the leakiness of the gut, which may be linked to autoimmune diseases in general. And they sort of acknowledge that there's no definitive randomized trial demonstrating that these you know, diets are effective, but the authors generally favor high fruit and vegetable intake, and they seem to be proponents of a whole foods plant-based diet. Now, obviously, there's no proof here, and I gave the caveats at the beginning of the video. Now, personally, I wouldn't say that these anecdotes are that impressive. I think it's fairly common for people to have periods of stability or even just have low disability for many decades with multiple sclerosis. I don't think it's that rare. If you look at the placebo group of modern clinical trials, the annualized relapse rate, the relapses per person per year, is only around 0.3. Four, which is one relapse per 2.5 years, you know, so if these individuals are going five years and having one relapse, you know, it's not that much different than the person, typical person with MS on placebo. Now, that being said, they're having minor relapses that recover and they're not developing progression and they have low disability after many years of disease, which is pretty good. There's a lot of evidence that people who are even in their 40s and 50s who have had MS for a long time often have some problems related to MS. They may be walking okay, but they probably can't complete an Ironman race. That's definitely the minority of people that could complete long-distance aerobic training who've had MS for 20 years. Some people, yes, but I would say there's no question that these individuals are doing better than average. Now, my philosophy on diet in general general has been we really don't need to have definitive evidence to make improvements in our diet. Eliminating processed food, eating more whole fruits and vegetables, I don't think it would be that controversial. Now, to say that a whole foods plant-based diet is better than another diet, like the Mediterranean diet or the paleo diet, I think you're going to need some stronger evidence to make that claim. There's just no good evidence for it. But if you do well on the diet and, you know, take appropriate supplements such as B12, which is deficient in vegan diets, I think it's a very healthy diet 
Some people report doing very well on the diet, and it's a reasonable way to go. Now, I do think it's somewhat risky to stop medication, particularly in younger people with more aggressive MS. I have definitely had some patients who decided to go the natural route and have not done well. And again, they're not going to be going to media outlets talking on podcasts, and they're not going to have case reports published like this. So keep in mind, you don't exactly know what the denominator is when you're you're looking at anecdotes. But anyway, as I said before, I'd be interested to know, have you tried a whole foods plant-based diet or a similar diet, a vegan diet, a paleo diet? What are your results? And would you be so confident in your diet to stop disease-modifying therapy? According to the research by Dr. Roy Swank, Many people who started on a strict low saturated fat diet did have relapses early on, and over time their relapse rate decreased. That suggests, at least based on these observational studies, that there could be some delayed effect of a healthy diet. Perhaps if you have a very good lifestyle over many years, your immune system could change, but it may not be immediately effective. And so I would definitely recommend caution against stopping medications, particularly in someone who's higher risk. Now, for these individuals, maybe they had very low lesion burden and very benign course, and it may be different for each individual, but of course, this is all speculation. Comments, questions, suggestions for future videos in the comments below.